And first here tonight from simple arguments turning into shootings to family members shooting other family members tonight. Louisville Metro Police are addressing an uptick in violence in our city. Hello everybody and thanks for joining us on the night team. I'm Doug Profit. According to information from Louisville Metro Police, officers have responded to 181 non fatal shootings as of this morning. That's about a 12% increase from this time last year. Homicides are also up about 7% as you see right here with 72 being reported so far this year. With well, WHS 11 night teams Taylor Woods and photojournalist Ian Hardwit covered the Metro Police News Conference about the recent shootings today. And Taylor, you also heard from community leaders who are very concerned about these hot temperatures and the summer months coming up. Yeah, Doug, well, those community leaders, they really tell me they're concerned and they're worried for the youth this summer, especially with school big out starting this Thursday, June 1st. They say they are planning activities and programs to keep young people busy and off the streets. On Nichols View Court, family members arguing, shooting and killing each other May 3rd. Today we're dealing with uh, individuals in our community who will soon shoot someone and possibly even take a life as a result of just having a beef. And in another case, two roommates fighting over the last Hot Pocket snack in the house on May 22nd. People in your own household. Uh, uh, I think we had a situation a couple weeks ago where somebody shot somebody over a Hot Pocket. No one died, but then on Saturday, a man was shot here in the 1500 block of Catalpa Street in an argument the victim says was over a lawnmower. Fights that should never escalate to killing. And we've seen it was in families. I think we had a, a father kill a son. You know, I don't know what it was all about. Metro police say people are too quick to pull the trigger over social media fights or gang revenge. And with school being out, several community leaders fear for young people, saying there must be activities to keep youth busy. Uh, making sure that youth are at the table, making sure that you feel safe, that they're heard, uh, that they feel engaged, and that, that, that there's actually something for the youth to do. Organizations like the Neighborhood House are doing just that. There is something to do for people of all ages, from toddlers, teenagers, to senior citizens through their summer programs. If you want kids to dream big, you have to show them big things. And so that's what we're trying to do is really show kids big things. Zion Smith, a Metro Youth Cabinet representative in District 15, echoes that giving youth hope will motivate them to stay on a consistent track. Giving them the ability to pursue their dreams, to go to college if they want to go to college, or provide tools if they want to jump into the workforce, that's also fine. And while Davison says Neighborhood House will continue taking kids on field trips, showing them what the world looks like so they can dream big in their future careers. That's really what we do with our kids is show them the opportunities in the world and help build resilience and social emotional awareness. Now, those community leaders say this is going to have to take community participation to make sure youth are involved and engaged this summer. In studio, Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 night team on your side. Taylor, thank you. Also, if you have any information about any of these shootings and you can help detectives, you can leave them an anonymous tip by calling 574-LMPD or visit the police department's online portal. Also new tonight, a man from New Albany is in the Louisville jail accused of shooting a New Albany police officer this morning. That officer is identified as Corporal Andrew Byrne, and he is expected to recover and said to be in good spirits, according to the New Albany mayor, Jeff Gahan. New Albany Police Chief Todd Bailey identifying the suspect as this man, 29-year-old Barry Souders of New Albany. He was also shot and was treated and released from the hospital and then taken right to the Louisville jail. Chief Bailey says Souders is charged with attempted murder and resisting law enforcement. Again, he's currently in Louisville Metro Corrections. That's because he's going to be waiting extradition back to Indiana. WHS 11's Grace McKenna with Chief Photojournalist Philip Merle explain how the shooting unfolded. Indiana State Police say it started with a call of a woman being shot at Tuesday morning. New Albany Police tracked a suspect to this neighborhood near 14th and Market Streets. It's a large area to, to process, so it's going to take some time. ISP said police began a short chase before the suspect shot at them, hitting an officer. The officer then shot the man who fled to a nearby home where law enforcement found him. Gordon Treader, a veteran Navy medic, heard the shots. And immediately being an ex Navy combat medic, I immediately ran towards the scenario because I knew there was a good chance that someone would need aid. Treader says he did what he could, acting on instinct, since something like this was totally unexpected. This is Typically a very quiet neighborhood. Most of the neighbors in the immediate area are really, really gentle. Just a block or two away, daycare worker Ashley Goodson heard the shots too. When it came this close, it, it was like it was 
it was like our home. Her own instinct, go on lockdown, protect the dozen or so kids inside this building and let their parents know they were safe. They don't come home to us, but we raise them, we teach them, we take care of them, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day. ISP said there's no danger to the public, though it will likely take them a while to gather details. I believe possibly there was witnesses besides, you know, video cameras that could have captured anything. So a lot of information to go over. It may be some time before we even realize how much information there is for us to look at. And for neighbors like Goodson and Treader, memories will likely linger. Grace McKenna for the WHAS 11 night team on your side. In a statement on Facebook, New Albany Mayor Jeff Gahan commended the officers. He adds, quote, all across the country, this type of violence is occurring more and more frequently. The mayor goes on to say our city's recent investments in new police equipment, facilities and training are more important now than ever. Kentucky State Police have released body camera and dash cam video of a shooting involving a Metro police officer that happened back in February. KSP says officers responded to Chenault Road in PRP for a woman hitting a car with a gun and pointing that gun at nearby homes. When officers arrived, they found Candy Basil with that gun. You see her right here highlighted by KSP. Officers then gave her several commands to drop the weapon. She keeps walking toward them. It's that point KSB says officer Donald Wyatt, a 19 year veteran, fired his gun. Basil, who had a known history of mental health crisis, survived the shooting. Officer Wyatt was placed on administrative duty. That's per department policy. KSB says this is still an ongoing investigation. A Louisville family is heartbroken after losing three loved ones in a house fire in Crescent Hill over the weekend. It's the toughest event this family has ever encountered. One minute I'm up, the next minute I'm bawling. I've seen death, but when it's somebody that close to home to you, it's a new ball game. That's Thomas Leonard. He lost his brother, sister-in-law, and mother in that fire on Kennedy Court this Sunday. Thomas says the fire happened on the second floor of the home owned by his mother, Linda Woods, while his brother was walking the family's dog outside. Once William noticed smoke coming from a window, Thomas says he immediately ran back to save his mom and wife, Rebecca. Thomas says firefighters discovered the three on the steps inside the home. They later died at the hospital. Investigators are still working to find out what caused that fire off Frankfurt Avenue. A month and a half after the mass shooting that has impacted so many in our community, Old National Bank is now moving out of their building on East Main Street. Five employees were killed in the shooting on April 10th in the Preston Point building. In a statement today, the Evansville Company's CEO said, out of respect for employees that were lost and those who were impacted, they're moving operations. They aren't moving far. They're going to be moving to this building, staying downtown in the Mercer building at 4th and Market Streets. Old National plans to open the new branch location by June 26th in a space that was once occupied by Stockyards Bank. Members of a National Horse Racing Oversight Group are going to be at Churchill Downs tomorrow as they investigate the string of deaths from horse racing at the track this spring. Twelve horses have died at the track since mid-April before the Kentucky Derby. In response, the Horse Racing Integrity and Safety Authority, or HISA, held an emergency summit of equine veterinarians today. They will use whatever they have at their disposal and determine whether or not there's anything missing, particularly like training records or veterinary records that preceded um, the horse racing of the track. Well, tomorrow, horse racing authorities, including a renowned track superintendent, will all be at Churchill Downs to provide a second opinion. Isis says they have not had any jockey or trainers say they believe the track is a factor in the deaths.